My grandpa had a plaque on his desk. This is a nonprofit organization. Didn't start out that way, but it just sort of is what it is. Hey everybody, welcome to Hometown Music. We got our first order of amplifiers in. Uh, if you've missed, I now work at a guitar shop at Hometown Music here in Harrisonburg, Virginia. We made our first order of some, these are the Fender amps. We've had a, what, a Squire bass. So in this video, we're gonna unbox, it looks like one, two, three, four Fenders. Uh, these are the Mustang, the LT40 the uh the champion 50 and then some just really fun solid state amps so if you're in the market these are going to be fun these are ones that we haven't tried and it's a kind of amp i haven't been that plugged into in the last couple of years now the other thing is there is an amp that's not here and that is the brand new tone master princeton reverb that one's back at the studio i'm going to do an unboxing video and first reactions on that because i still use like there's a deluxe reverb a tone master down here i still use my tone master deluxe reverb every single day so anyway let's go see what steven's up to Redoing our pick display here. Oh, there it is. So all of yeah, yeah, all the picks. So we carry a huge variety of picks, so just makes inventory less tedious. But then for the last little bit, because we changed our point of sale, so for the last little bit, give them a grumpy sound. Oh, so this is what we've been getting. <laughs> yeah, so trying to get rid of that. This footage will be sped up anyway. Hopefully, maybe. Look at that thing. 17th of June, 2022. This one did its final inspection.
Four amps up, four amps down. All I played through the PRS is a custom 24. This is the Azira Verde. Uh, this is also the 08 version, which gives you the two coil taps. I'm having a bit of a moment with Paul Reed Smith. I think the total winner out of the four of these was the first one, the Champ 20. I remember selling this. I used to sell this amp when I worked at another guitar shop and it was always fine. It's that, or it's, you know, it's, it's okay. It's better than the tiny little champs, but usually they just don't sound that good. This one genuinely sounds really exciting and wonderful. A thing they've either added since I sold them originally, or they've just made a lot better is the actual modeling in the amp and they just stick to their, well, not all of them, but they stick to like their main two amps, which they give you a tweed deluxe kind of sound and then a black face and they're going to pull like a Princeton, that kind of tone. And on the first one, on the 5e3 kind of amp, it really sounds like fizzy and just like a tube amp that's ready to blow up. And it's awesome. It sounds really cool. And I, I think it's cool to get a, an amp for beginner, like entry level kind of guitar players that actually sounds like a cool and iconic amp. Um, so like, yeah, this one's 129 bucks for the champ. So to me, this one is, uh, we're gonna sell a lot more of these cause I think it's awesome. And I immediately think like, okay, that's a great amount of amp. Sounds good. And also fills up a room. All of these, we turned them up kind of, well, I turned them up as loud as I thought was reasonable. And they filled this whole room. I could hear the guitars kind of humming after we finished playing them. So champ 20 total winner. I would give it like an eight and a half out of 10. We're next door to a recycling center, so if you hear like clanging, gonging, it, say, it seems like there's a bunch of pipes being thrown around over across the parking lot. But the second amp that we went through was the uh, LT40, which is a brand new amp. It's directly meant to compete against probably the Yamaha THR, the Positive Grid Spark, that same kind of desktop amp. Now, there are huge advantages to this kind of amp. Number one, it's a lot smaller. Number two, it uses a different kind of speakers. And so with these little four inch drivers, you get a lot more fidelity, bass, treble, that sharpness and that, that crispiness of the high end. So it works out a whole lot better. Now, to me, this amp, I'll lead with the fact that this amp is, it's complicated. It's, there's an app and there's a USB and there's a bunch of ways to plug it in. And it's also a Bluetooth speaker. So it's, it's probably overwhelming to a beginner, but this one is, it's 199, which that is, Yamaha THRs are now like 350 bucks if you're looking for them used. So to me, that's a really exciting thing. And it comes with the whole infrastructure of the other stuff Fender offers. It comes with the app, it comes with some plugins. You could use this as an interface and would be, I mean, it's a formidable thing. So I, I like that one a lot. I would still, I'd call it like a 7.2 out of 10 for me because the complexity of it and uh, it's just more complicated. Now, obviously you saw me, I used it kind of looking over so that you could see me playing it when normally you would have it facing yourself. But uh, it sounds good, plays well, it's super light. And uh, I think at the, that price point, it is a, I mean, a clear kind of winner in, in this line for that size, that shape, those features. So exciting. <laughs> The third amp that I tried was the Champ 50 XL. Now this one, I had hoped it would be a different thing than it is. I'd hoped that it would have been like a beefy sounding rock and roll amp that I could tell a high school kid would stick with a hardcore or metal band. Um, I thought it would be, I thought it would be bassier. I thought it would be real crispy in its overdrive. What was surprising to me was the clean is really good. I mean, it's what you would expect in a solid state amp, a 12 inch speaker, 50 watts. It is punchy and bright. Now, everything about this amp, and it's also because I was sitting behind it, this amp was just very shrill. Um, it's very kind of ice picky. I'm sure that could be tweaked. The last thing I'll say is the effects on it. It's weird that the first effect, if you want reverb, you have to go past reverb and chorus combined. So the first one, it's weird. Like you strum and you're like, what is this? Is my guitar out of tune? What's going on here? And it's just that reverb and chorus are stuck together first. But there's also a pretty fun and usable like delay in there. Starts with a slap back and then goes to the longer uh, eighth note uh, delay. Now, I think what they're doing with a lot of these solid state amps is that they're pulling the same 
kind of engine and heart out of the Mustang Micro and the other Mustang uh, processors where you get the same kind of delay set. Chorus and reverb and vibrato and those kinds of things with a little bit of tweakability between them. So I think it's a fun gateway. It's definitely loud. That one is shockingly loud. And, um, but I, it's not what I hoped it would be. So yeah, seven, what did I say? Seven, oh, I haven't given a number on this one. I would give this one to me high sixes, 6.8, 6.9. Feels like it's pretty helpful for the high school kid that would be into that. But overall, it's not what I hoped it would be. Now the last one, which is a tried and true rock and roll machine, is a tiny little tube amp, and this is the Pro Junior. This is the li the limited edition V4, and so with this, it is just a, a badass, powerful little thing, and it roars. I mean, from the get-go, from the jump, especially with a humbucker guitar, it's overdrivey and bitey. So yeah, so that's the Pro Junior. That one is $649. Now it is the only tube amp in this list. It is the most expensive in this list, and that's why I saved it to last. Um, to me, this is a, I mean, this is the bare bones of what you would want. If you want a traditional style guitar, a, a traditional style amp, if you want something that would overdrive, give you tube overdrive, uh, I'm a big fan of this. Now, I wish that it was, I mean, that's, what I don't like about it is the exact thing why people would love it. It does not stay clean very loud. As soon as you get it loud enough to fill the room, it's overdrivey and bitey, and uh, there's not a whole lot of taming it because you just have the tone. Like, it's volume and tone, and so you don't have a whole lot, and what I found myself doing was using the volume knob on my guitar a lot. But, this is a powerful duo. Now, this is not all the amps that we're going to sell, but I do think that this is these are the first four that we picked. Now, there are a couple more that are coming, and we'll make more videos, but we're figuring out how to run a guitar shop. Now, this is not, we're not starting new. This is a guitar shop that's been around for 23 years, and so with Chuck, um, he's been amazingly gracious to help and to be around, and uh, these were a couple that he thought, you should try, you could get into this, and we probably would know some some high school kids and younger players that would be into these. So it's all of this dance. And so thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. We're trying to figure out how to run a guitar shop, and we're also trying to work it out to where we can share and bring you along as we do it. Um, one of the things for this is that to be a Fender dealer or to be any kind of dealer, there are pretty big expectations from those dealers for you for what you should stock and what you should have available and uh, to meet certain criteria and to make sure that it makes sense. So if you're in the Valley, if you're in Virginia, if you're in North Carolina, DC, if you want to jump on a plane, come hang out. We had Morgan came and hung out last week. So thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, that's Steven, and this is Hometown Music. See you later. Mm -hmm.